Hey everybody, it's Ann Beebe. Today is uh, Monday, April 26, 2021. I'm Barb Hammer. So I'm at the new place where we're uh, going to be moving into. We have possession, but we haven't moved in yet. Um, it's, a, it's a condo that we bought and it's a lot of money, but <laughs> we're, we're at the low end of the market. Yeah, so, um, but we're lucky, you know, we're not homeless, and there are a lot of homeless around here, that's for sure. So, yeah, still lots of speculation in the real estate market in many parts of the world, especially in the West, despite this uh, COVID uh, great suppression, which is what I call it. It's like um, uh, the Great Depression plus um a crackdown clamp down on dissent if you dare question uh the the god covid um so um um the place is being repainted that's why I have, we haven't been able to move in we've been putting things in a storage locker in the garage in the meantime and still packing still lots to do for the move so um, um, there's no painting going on right now we hired someone to do it professionally um, it's it's a huge job and it's just too much for my husband and me it would be too much um, and it would take forever for us to do it it's taking longer than expected it's a, it's a big job so um, it's taking a while so uh, it might be done this week, I don't know. So I'm just looking out the window at the new place. Looking out the window of the room where I'll be, be kind of like my office and I can make videos and uh, do research, whatever. Um, anyway, so uh, fortunately there are some trees here. I'm looking out to the east. Um, so, yeah, some nice tall trees for now, but around here, you never know. They disappear when more development moves in. So, yeah, this is the view, looking out my window. So, I'm slowly trying to pan down. Um, uh, we have a lovely view <laughs> of the garbage and recycling and the compost um, for the building. And uh, our unit uh, is just above the garage. <laughs> so we're actually on um, an important, a major artery, I guess, in, uh, in Abbotsford in British Columbia, Canada. So we're in the Fraser Valley in an outer suburb of Vancouver. So nice trees. And uh, we won't be getting the hot sun in the west in the afternoon and evening anymore. So that's a blessing. So, um, yeah, we have, like, we have a side balcony here. I can kind of see the edge of that side balcony. And we have a little front balcony. And um, some more space, so that's good. Anyway, so... Um, I haven't made any videos in a while, and I, I'm looking at so much stuff. I've been propaganda watching like crazy. And um, among the propaganda was, um, so yesterday it was the Oscar Awards, the Motion Picture Academy Awards in Hollyweird, as it's called now. And it's just, it's become practically pure propaganda now, Hollywood movies. And that's why... Actually, the better movies now are made in China or in Asia, but anywhere but Hollywood, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, so I was aware that there were a couple of reasons why in China, including Hong Kong, they weren't going to be broadcasting the Oscar awards. And um, so China gets really fed up with Western propaganda. 
And one reason they weren't going to broadcast the awards was um, there is a short documentary called Do Not Split. And it was about, uh, it's propaganda. So it's about um, the 2019, um, what I call the CIA MI6 NGO terrorism in Hong Kong. And uh, the, I watched that documentary, short documentary. It's only about a half an hour long. And it's terrible. It didn't win an Oscar, fortunately. <laughs> and it was, I don't know who won, but that, that documentary is just poorly produced, really. And I think the director, unfortunately, has the same family name as I do, Hammer. Um, I don't think he's from the U.S. I think maybe, I can't remember where he's from. Um, yeah, do not split. Uh, so really disgusting film and um, so it smears the police claiming they were brutal and at the beginning it says that Hong Kong traditionally has um, like peaceful uh, protests of civil, civil disobedience or something like that and then you know within a minute later or so they show these thugs dressed in black masked you know, all equipped, and they got weapons on them. And they torch a Bank of China branch in Hong Kong. I mean, they just set it ablaze. So arson is considered peaceful civil disobedience now. Um, amazing. So it was clearly a battle. Like, you know, anybody with a brain watching that could see that those were not peaceful protesters. Um, and they were using weapons. They had like these slingshots and catapults and lasers they were shooting at the cops. And um, yeah, it was very violent. It was like a battle. And it, as I watched it, I realized it, it looked very much like the uh, Maidan color revolution, that Western regime change operation in Ukraine back in um, 2014. Yeah, the winter of 2013, 24, ended in 2014. Um, and that was actually the inspiration for the terrorists in Hong Kong. So these are like proxy, these are like the, the Hong Kong Contras, some people call them, call them um, proxies, you know, for the West, for Western big business interests, really, business interests, yeah, the business class. That's kind of a theme of my video now, so it's about the business class. Um, so the people, people often say it's the U.S. against China, and it is kind of, but it's really the business class against a government in Beijing that has, it's a, has, still has regulations on businesses. Um, so the other reason that China did not broadcast the Oscars was um, a film director named uh, Chloe Zhao, or Zhao, and her Chinese name was, uh, or still is, I guess, I don't know, Zhao, Zhao, Zhao Ting, Zhao Ting. Um, and so she won Best Director for a film um, that's getting a lot of good reviews, acclaim, called Nomad Land, Nomad Land, as in Nomad. And uh, I think it won Best Picture. I don't know if it won other awards. It might have, I don't know. But anyway, Chloe Zhao was getting a lot of attention. And so she's being hailed as the first woman of color uh, to win as uh, best director. Um, so it's all about identity politics, the fact that she's a woman and the fact that she's uh, Chinese or Asian. Well, the interesting thing about Chloe Zhao, and this is why China, one reason China did not want to broadcast the Oscars and people say, oh, well, China censors, you know, so shame, shame, shame. Well, China is just bombarded with propaganda. And the West likes to just push so much crap, um, subversive crap. I mean, China has to deal with a lot of subversives inside the country who sell out. These are Chinese people. They sell out for money. 
and they decide to become propagandists or uh, subversives in other ways for um, Western big business interests in smear China. So anyway, so Cla uh, Chloe Zhao. So Chloe Zhao has made, made comments in the past um, smearing China. So she said something about, you know, whenever she was in China, she just felt like she was surrounded by lies or something. It was something about lies, you know. And also, she's also uh, smeared Chinese culture and was talking, has talked about how oppressive it is and, you know, so... Um, yeah, like she, uh, but I think it in her, in her acceptance speech and her answers to, uh, reporters after the awards, uh, she didn't talk like, so I say that she's, she's Chinese. She identifies as Chinese when it's convenient. So in her acceptance, acceptance, acceptance speech, she talked about her childhood in China. So she's from Beijing originally. She talked about her childhood in uh, China and how she and her dad would memorize like Chinese poetry or whatever and finish each other's sentences. You know, when they started reciting poetry, I guess, or something. It was a little game of theirs. Um, yeah, so she's Chinese when it's convenient. Yeah, so um, I looked into her background so after Deng Xiaoping opened up China to uh, markets in the late 70s, early 1980s, um, there were suddenly um, some Chinese who um, got wealthy as a result. Um, and Klo Zhao's dad, I know he was like a business executive or something, and it might have been for a state-owned enterprise, I'm not sure. Anyway, he was a business executive. Her, her mother was with the People's Liberation Army, anyway, but her dad was a business executive. So they had money. So they did well when these market um, reforms uh, started in China. And that is actually a form of neoliberalism. And they did cause uh, some hardship, and it uh, there was it bred the discontent among Chinese, and so the West took advantage of that. So they wanted the market reforms, but they also took advantage of the hardship and the, and the grievances that people had there to orchestrate protests against uh, the government in China. So there were protests throughout the 80s, especially on university campuses, from what I understand. Um, and then that led up to 1989 and that the CIA MI6 color revolution at Tiananmen Square. And not just at Tiananmen Square, but across China. So this um, Chloe Zhao, because her family, her parents, especially her dad, they had money. They were the nouveau riche in China. And so they sent her off to the UK to go to school when she was a child. And then they sent, then uh, she went to Southern California, Los Angeles area. And um, she eventually got into filmmaking. So she's a California girl, really. So she just spouts all the, her behavior and everything is, you know, California, identity politics, and very shallow, superficial. Um, and there is actually a term, there is a term for Chinese like her. Uh, they are uh, the bourgeois children of the nouveau, nouveau riche. And in Chinese, the term is furdai, furdai, something like that. I don't speak Chinese. I know there are different pronunciations. There are lots of different accents, pronunciations in Chinese, especially between the mainland and Hong Kong, where Cantonese is spoken. So um, furdai, furdai, Something that like that, um, yeah, and I love that term. So it's the bourgeois kids of the nouveau riche, and that's Chloe Zhao. So she's very su superficial. She she loves the freedom of the West, and I, I read something about how she went to school in the UK and she learned the truth, you know, because there were so many lies in China. So she's just completely brainwashed and indoctrinated, and you know, I can't really tell her attitudes are not. 
Chinese, superficially Chinese, so she still has a, a slight Chinese accent. But, you know, she's very much California and her values, identity politics, and um, she seems very self-absorbed um, in her comments uh, to a question from a reporter. She said something about, about living in an RV while that she was making that film. She learned to learn, she learned to live with less, you know, that she could live with less. And I go, oh my God. So I think the subject of the film Nomadland is the suffer, the people who were displaced because of the, um, the last financial crisis. So people who lost their homes or whatever, this is my understanding of the film. It's about the last financial crisis and how people suffered and were displaced and they had to live out of vehicles or RVs, I don't know, something like that. So that's why it's called Nomad Land. So did she talk about the hardship that people are experiencing now with yet another uh, economic depression that's even worse, the, which I call the Great Suppression? No, she just talked about herself and how she learned to live with less. And I'm going, oh my God. So, you know, she doesn't seem to be very aware of what's going on in Southern California. So, so many homeless people there, uh, as there are here, I see them, you know, I pass a homeless camp every day. Um, people camped out and things, homeless problem has gotten even worse now. Um, but no, it's about her and how she's learned to live with less. Okay, good for you. So this is the problem uh, in a lot of Chinese, uh, supposedly pro-Chinese circles, there's like this business class attitude and it's all about identity politics and racism and white supremacy. And they don't talk about class, the class divide. Um, and that's why there's a lot of misunderstanding about what's going on in China. Uh, the demonization of China is because of its system. They still have regulation on big business. Big business does not control the government in Beijing. So all these false comparisons between the West and China, and people don't talk about these issues. And actually, uh, a lot of the YouTubers who are very popular because they say good things about China, they love China, they're the business class element. And what they really are doing is infiltrating these circles and to undermine the system and to privatize. They want to neoliberalize China even more. Um, that's the problem. And, you know, unfortunately, sadly, they're Jeff Jeffrey Sachs is very popular because he appeared on the BBC. Oh, my gosh. So, you know, any, anybody who um, is not a challenge to the establishment is going to be allowed to speak on the BBC. So he made some token comments, you know, dispelling the propaganda about Uyghurs in Xinjiang. Um, and I don't know why he's suddenly so popular because he, he helped destroy Russia's economy. And uh, when it was, uh, when the USSR was dissolved, you know, it was undermined. Gorbachev was a puppet, Yeltsin was a puppet, and they allowed the West to neoliberalize Russia. And Jeffrey Sachs was one of the Harvard boys and he helped um, them do that help the West neoliberalize, destroy Russia's economy and standard of living. And since Putin has come to power, so he's uh, sort of rebuilt the uh, system and um, kind of pushed the West, Western influence out somewhat so that people have a better standard of living again. It's not the same as the USSR, but you know, it's a market system, mixed system, market system, where Russia has a strong sovereign government and can regulate things. Um, and so I don't, this Jeffrey Sachs thing, he has a position at a think tank, a Western think tank in Beijing, that its main funding comes from the Ford Foundation and Gates Foundation, and Ford Foundation has long been, yeah, so Bill Gates, yeah, and the Ford Foundation has been a long time front for the CIA. And uh, so this think tank uh, is closely tied to the Chinese government and advises the Chinese government. So, you know, Jeffrey Sachs is doing his little part, his part to, you know, uh, yeah, he still brags about, yeah, I think in his bio it says that his, uh, his specialty is to transition 
economies from a planned system to a market system and so there you go that's jeffrey sachs and so i guess that's my rant for today this is a long rant because i haven't made a video in a while so i just want to talk about holly weird and the oscars and uh, that short documentary about hong kong and um chloe joe um and what's going on with china anyway i guess that's it for now so another view of the trees here another view of the trees there's some traffic on the street there it's rush hour it's not too bad out of here so those are the trees i hope they stay for a while i don't know it's pretty nice to look at so nice not a bad day today anyway i guess that's it for now, so thanks for listening, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.